Hi, today we're going to be learning about constructing quadrilaterals. First, let's take a look at the instruments that we're going to need for these constructions. We're going to need our compass and pencil. Make sure that your pencil is nice and sharp and that your compass hinge is nice and tight. We're also going to need another pencil as well. We're going to need our protractor and we're going to need our eraser. And then a ruler is always helpful to have on hand as well. Okay, so those are the things we're going to be using while we're doing our constructions today. Before we get on to constructing quadrilaterals, first let's take a look at how to construct parallel lines because that is something we're going to be doing a lot of in the work of constructing quadrilaterals. So over here, I have got a line with A and B marked on it and I've got the point D over here and what we need to do is we need to construct a line that is parallel to AB from point D. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm my pencil I'm going to join up A and D making sure that I draw through D up to a new point that I'm just going to call this over here E just that I have something to refer to it by. I don't need, necessarily need to label that E. That's just so that I can call it something while I'm speaking to you. Okay, so that over there is going to be what we call the transversal, which is the line that's going to end up cutting through our parallel lines. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my protractor, my compass, and I'm going to put, I'm going to open it up, okay, and I'm going to put the needle on the point A over here, and then I'm going to draw an arc so that it goes through both of those lines. It needs to go through AD and it must go through AB. Okay. Once I've done that, I take my, my compass without changing the radius and I put it on point D as well. And I'm going to draw an arc and try and make it look the same as this one. Okay. So I put it on point D. It's going to cut through over there. And I'm going to keep on going quite far to try and get it to be the same as what I've got over there. Okay? Because this needs to cut through where I expect that parallel line to go. And so it needs to be far enough down to do that. So now I've got these two arcs that I'm going to be using. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to change the radius of the compass by making it the same as the width or the, the distance between the point where this arc crosses AD and where it crosses AB. So I need to take my compass like this, put it on that point over there, and I'm going to open this up so that it's the same as that distance like that. Okay, so now you can see over here, that is the distance between that point and that point. Okay, once I've got that, I'm then going to take my compass and I'm going to put it on the top of this arc over here where it crosses the line between D and E. And then I'm going to draw an arc with it so that it crosses this arc that I've made over here. Okay, so that now ha gives me a point over here that I'm going to be working with. That is the point that I'm going to be joining with D over here. And when I do this, the line that I'm joining, that I'm drawing now, is parallel to this line over here. Now, if you don't know what parallel means, it means that it is the same distance apart and it will always be the same distance apart. They're never gonna get closer. They're never gonna get further apart. They're always going to stay the same distance apart. So parallel lines can never cross over each other because they never get any closer to each other. So if you look over here, that distance is 6.1 and over here, it is still 6.1. If I put my ruler straight, okay? so. The distance between those lines is consistent. Those are parallel lines. So that's how we construct parallel lines. We take the line we've got already. We make sure that there's a transversal that has a point on it. And then we draw an arc through the two lines over here where they cross or um, from the point where they cross. Then we're going to draw a similar arc up at the other point over here. And then we measure the distance between the two points where the, the arc crossed the two lines. And we use that same distance to draw an arc over here. And then we can join that up over there. 
Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing for quite a few of the constructions we're going to be doing today. Now, the next thing we're going to do is before we actually look at doing constructions of quadrilaterals, just ha let's have a look at some of the, the quadrilaterals that we get. These are the constructions that we're going, or the quadrilaterals that we're going to be drawing today. Okay, so over here, I've got the parallelogram. The parallelogram is a quadrilateral, which is a four sided shape, and it has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. So this side and that side are opposite, they are parallel, and this side and that side are opposite, so they are parallel. So both of the opposite pair, both of the pairs of opposite sides are parallel to each other, and that is what makes a quadrilateral a parallelogram. The next kind of quadrilateral that we're going to draw is the rectangle. Now a rectangle is the same as a parallelogram except that it has a 90 degree angle. Okay, and by having one 90 degree angle that causes it to have all 90 degree angles. But when we are constructing it, we're going to do the same thing as we do for the parallelogram. We're just going to make sure that this is a 90 degree angle. A rhombus is the same as a parallelogram except that all of the sides are equal. So in order to get that when you construct it, we're going to make sure that one pair of adjacent sides is equal and that will cause all of them to be equal. A square is the same as a rectangle, but it also has all sides equal. Then a kite is a completely different kind of quadrilateral. It is not in any way like a parallelogram. It has got two pairs of adjacent sides equal. Now adjacent means next to each other. So that side and that side are next to each other. They're equal in length. This side and this side are next to each other. They are also equal in length. And then we've got the trapezium where we have one pair of opposite sides which are, is parallel and then the other pair is not parallel. Okay, so now we're going to start off by doing our parallelogram. So over here, I've got, again, the line with A and B marked on it that we're going to be starting from. And we're going to start off in very much the same way that we did when we were doing our parallel lines in the last example. Because a parallelogram is a four-sided shape that has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel to each other. So we have to be drawing parallel lines. That's what our, our whole goal is going to be in this. So now what we're going to do is, in this case, I haven't been given a point D, so I'm going to make a point D somewhere above the line. And I'm going to call that D, like that. So that is my point that is going to be one of the vertices, one of the corners of my parallelogram. I'm going to be creating a parallelogram A, B, C, D. So it's going to be A, B, C, D. When we label a shape, we don't go A, B, and then jump across the shape and go C, D. We go around the shape. So it's A, B, C, D, like that. So that's why this is going to be point D over here. Okay, so now just like we did when we were doing the parallel lines, we're going to start off by drawing up A and D and drawing past D. So we're going through D up to a point over there. Now you can call this E if you want to, you don't necessarily have to. Okay, that's just that I can refer to it while I'm speaking to you. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just like we did when we were doing the parallel lines, I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to put the, the needle on A and to draw an arc so it goes through both of those lines like that. Okay, then keeping the compass the same radius I'm going to put it on D and I'm going to do the same thing, making it look as much like the other one as possible. So again, going quite far around so that it will go past the point where I expect that parallel line to be. I can see it's going to go in that direction so I can kind of judge, okay, it should go about like that. So it needs to go past that point over there. Once I've done that, I need to now change the, the radius of my compass, putting it on over here and making it opening it up so that it's the same distance or it's, this, it's equal to the distance from the one point where the arc intersects the line to the point where the arc intersects the other line. Okay, and then I'm going to use my compass with that new radius 
and put it on this point over here where the second arc intersected DE and I'm going to draw an arc crossing that arc over there. So now you can see I've got an arc over there with a point of intersection over here and this is where I'm going to now join up with D. So now I can draw a line from D through that point of intersection like that. And I need to make sure I draw it far enough so that when I draw the, the other side, which is going to be parallel to this one, it will be able to intersect with the line I've got over here. Okay, so now I've done my first parallel line over there. The, the next thing I need to do is I need to draw a parallel line or a line that is parallel to AD because remember a parallelogram has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. So now I've drawn one pair of opposite sides that is parallel. I need to draw my second pair of opposite, opposite sides must also be parallel. So now I need to draw a, line, a side that is parallel to AD. So what I'm going to do is exactly the same thing as I did when I was doing this one. I'm going to do it the other way around to draw this one over here. Okay, so just like I did over here, I started off with my compass and I draw an arc. Now I'm going to, I'm just going to keep the same radius as I had when I was doing this. Okay, so I'm going to draw an arc over here from A, so it crosses through both of those. Sorry, I slipped there. Okay, from A, so it crosses through both of those lines and I'm going to do the same arc from B over here. Like that, okay? Just like I did the one over here and then the same one over there. Now I'm doing the same thing here. I've got one over here. I'm doing the same thing over there. Okay, once I've done that, just like I was doing with this one, I'm now going to measure the distance from where this arc crosses both of those lines. So from there to here. Okay, so now I've got that distance. Now I can take this and put it on the point where this arc crosses that line over there. And I'm going to draw a new arc to intersect with that arc over there. So now I've got a point of intersection over there, which I'm going to join up with B. And this is what I end up with. Okay, and then this I can label C. So now I've got my parallelogram a, B, C, D, where A, B is parallel to C, D, and A, D is parallel to B, C. So that's how you draw a parallelogram, by drawing two pairs of opposite sides parallel to each other. Okay, the next one that we're going to do is a rectangle. Now, when we do a rectangle, it's going to be very similar to what we were doing for the parallelogram in terms of the parallel line part, but we have to start off slightly differently. I can't just make a random point and draw a line because it has to be at 90 degrees. So that we're going to start off for our rectangle over here by drawing a perpendicular line at a point. Now, we've already learned how to do this. Okay, so I'm going to draw a perpendicular line at A over here. So to do that, I need to have my compass. I need to draw an arc from A through both sides of this line over here. So I need to draw an arc over there and an arc on this side over here as well. Then I make my compass a bit wider and I put it on the points where those two arcs intersect with the line. And I draw above like that and over here same thing so it intersects with that arc that I just drew and now I've got a point of intersection over there that I can join up with A to get a perpendicular line okay so now I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to join A and that point of intersection Okay, so now I've got the line that I'm going to be using. Now I need to have a point that is on that line. So I'm going to put a point on that line, leaving a bit of space above that point because I'm going to need to do an arc above there like I was for my parallelogram. 
and we're just doing parallel lines, okay? And I'm going to call this point D, okay? Because I'm going to have my rectangle going A, B, C, D. So this needs to be point D over here. Okay, so now I'm going to go and draw parallel lines. Just like I did for the parallelogram, I'm starting with AB and I'm making a line parallel to that from D. Okay, so I'm going to take my protractor, my compass, put the needle on A, and I'm going to draw an arc so that it goes through both of these lines, just like we did for the parallelogram. And then I take my same compass with the same radius, and I'm going to do the same thing above D over here. Okay, once I've done that, I need to now change the radius of my compass to be the same as the distance between these two points of intersection, where the arc intersects with AD and where the arc intersects with AB. So I put it on there, and I open this up, make it wider so that it's the same as that distance over there. And now I'm going to go and put my compass on this point where it intersected with the line over here, where this second arc intersected with the line, and I can draw an arc going through that arc. Now I've got a point of intersection that I can join up with D. And here I have my parallel line. Like that. Okay. So that's my first parallel line. The second one I'm going to do is at point B, just like we did for the parallelogram. I'm going to do exactly the same thing over here. So I'm going to take, I just want to check if that's going to be long enough. No, it's not. So I'm going to make this a bit narrower over here, like that. Okay, so I'm going to do this one over here. From point A. And I'm going to draw my arc. Okay, this is actually, I need to be careful with that. And then I'm going to draw the same arc from B over here. Okay, just like I did before with the parallelogram. Now I'm going to open this up so that I have the same radius as the distance between these two points of intersection. Like that. And now I can go and put this over here and cross over that arc so that I can now join up this point of intersection with B forming the other side of my parallel of my rectangle. Like that. And there we have our rectangle, which we can now label A, B, C, D. Okay, so that's how you draw a rectangle. You do the same process as, we would, as what we did for our parallelogram, but we have to start off with a perpendicular line so we'll have this 90 degree angle in the beginning. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is a rhombus. Okay, now if you remember from over here, a rhombus is the same as a parallelogram with two sides that are adjacent and equal, okay? So all of the sides end up being equal if we have two sides that are which are adjacent that are equal. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is the exact same process that we had for drawing the parallelogram. We're going to do the same thing for the rhombus, but we have to make sure that we start off with P the right distance away, or with D the right distance away from A so that they are, it's the same length as AB. Okay, so that's what I'm going to start off by doing over here. Okay, so for this example, over here I've got AB. Now, what I need to do is I need to start off and I need to make the distance of my, or the radius of my compass, the same as the length from A to B. So I put it on A and I open it up so that the the pencil is on B, and then I can draw an arc above here. And now I know that wherever I choose to put point D, so long as it's on that arc, it will be the same distance from A as B is. Okay, so I'm going to end up with two sides next to each other that are the same length as each other. Okay, so now I'm going to put a point D on this arc. I'm going to put it over here. 
okay now it could be anywhere on that arc I'm choosing to put it over here so that I'm going to label D once I've done that I can now carry on like I would for any other parallelogram so I'm going to go and join this up over here to get my line AD okay then I'm going to do my next step is to do the parallel line the line that is parallel to AB let's close that a bit so that I have um, so I can actually fit it put my compass on A and I'm going to draw an arc through AD and AB then I put my compass on D and I do the exact same thing like that okay once I've done that I go and change the radius to make it the same as the distance between these two points of intersection like that and now I can go and put my compass on this point of intersection from this arc over here and I can draw a new arc to intersect with that like that now I've got a point of intersection there that I can uh, join up with D so I can draw this side of my rhombus like this okay once I've done that I'm going to do the same thing to draw a parallel line over here which is or a line over here which is parallel to AD okay so over here I'm going to start off by putting my compass again on A and I'm going to just make that a bit bigger so I can see them separately and draw a new arc over there and then I'll put my compass on B and draw the same arc over here now I'm going to change the radius of my compass to be the same as the distance between that point of intersection and this point of intersection and I put it over here and I draw a new arc to get a point of intersection over there which I can now join with B and that gives me the last side of my rhombus so this over here I'm going to label point C and then I have my rhombus A B C D like that okay so that's how you draw a rhombus it's the same as a parallelogram but you have to make sure that you're starting off with your two sides that are adjacent to each other the same length and to do that you measure the distance from A to B with your compass and then you draw an arc from A so that you can end up with a point on that arc which is also the same distance from A to D as it is from A to B and that way you can make sure that you have your all your sides will end up being equal okay so that's how we do a rhombus the next one we're going to do is a square now a square is the same as a rectangle but it's also the same as a rhombus in that it has uh, 90 degree angles and it also has all sides equal so we're going to use what we did for both of those to draw our square okay so over here I'm going to be drawing a square on this line with a B as one of the sides so again a B C D and just like I did for my rectangle I need to start off by drawing a perpendicular line okay so I'm going to do this over here put my compass on A and I need to draw an arc on that side of the line and on that side okay now I'm going to make my compass wider and I'm going to draw an arc from this point of intersection above the line and from this point of intersection above the line like that so now I've got a point over here that I can join up with A to get my perpendicular line okay now the next thing I need to do is I need to determine where D is going to be when I was doing the rectangle so 
So far, this is the same as what I did for the rectangle. I created or I constructed a perpendicular line. But when I did the rectangle, I could just put D anywhere on this line. But that's not going to work for a square because the square, the D has to be in a specific place. So that it's the same length from A to D as it is from A to B. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did for my rhombus. And I'm going to get this distance from A to B with my compass. And then I'm going to use that to know how far D must be away from A. Okay, so I start off by putting my compass on A. And I make sure that it is opened so that it's the same length or it's the same distance, or uh, it is the distance from A to B. Okay, so now I can take that and I can draw an arc through the perpendicular line like this. And now this distance is the same as that distance, which means that when I label this D over here, then AB is the same length as AD. So now when I create my when I follow the process for drawing a parallelogram, I'm going to end up with a 90 degree angle and equal sides, which means it's going to be a square. Okay, so now doing the exact same thing as I was doing for all the other ones, which were all parallelograms, I'm going to create a, or I'm going to construct a parallel line to AB over here from D. So I put my compass on A, to make that a little bit smaller and I'm going to draw an arc like that then I'm going to put it on D and draw the same arc like this okay then I need to go and measure this distance from that point of intersection to this point of intersection over here and then I can go and put my compass on this point over here where this arc intersects with the line and I can draw a new arc like that. And then this point of intersection is where I'm going to join up with D. Okay, so D was this point over here and I'm joining it up with that point over there. like that. Okay, so now I've got my line that is parallel to AB. Now I need to go and draw a line from B, which it will be parallel to AD, doing the exact same thing. So I'm going to take my compass, put it on A, and I'm going to draw an arc that goes through both lines, like that, and draw the same arc from B, like that. Okay, then I need to go and change the radius of my compass. So I put it on here, open it up so it reaches that point of intersection over there. And then I'm going to put it over here and draw a new arc to give me a point of intersection that I can join with B. And now when I join these up, I can label this C and now I've got my square A, B, C, D like that. So that's how you construct a square. Now all of the ones we've done up until this point are basically all parallelograms but some of them have special features. So let's just quickly have a look back at the ones that we've done. So the first one over here, this was a regular parallelogram. So what we do for this, we draw our, we start off with our line that we that we're starting from and we draw what we call the transversal for the first set of parallel lines. A transversal is a line that cuts through parallel lines. So there's our transversal and then we construct a set of par or a parallel line, a line that is parallel to AB. By drawing our arc, the same arc at D, then we measure that distance and we use that same distance to draw an arc over here so we can join up our parallel line. Then we do the same thing to draw a line that is parallel to AD. We draw an arc over here again, and then we use that same arc and we draw it over here. Then we measure that distance from here to there, just like we did before. We use that same distance to draw an arc over here, and then we can join that up. And this gives us our parallelogram. 
Now that process is exactly the same process that we follow for all of them that we've done so far. We did the parallelogram, then we did our rectangle, which was this one over here. Okay, so now remember, the rectangle was the same as the parallelogram. The only difference was we started off, instead of just putting D anywhere, we had to put D somewhere that was on a line that was perpendicular to AB. So we had to start off by drawing a perpendicular line at point A. Okay, and now we know how to draw perpendicular lines. We construct our arcs on both sides, then or we draw an arcs on both sides, and then we use those to draw our arcs above, and then we can draw our perpendicular line. Okay, so we get our perpendicular line. Once we've done that, we can then put D anywhere on that perpendicular line because this is a rectangle. So the sides, the opposite sides would be the same length, but the adjacent sides don't. So I didn't need to worry about where D was going to be on that line, unlike for the square. So I put D on that line, and then I drew a perpendicular line over here, or a parallel line over here, a line parallel to AB, just like I did for the parallelogram. And then I did the same thing to draw BC, a parallel line to AD. So that was the rectangle. So the only thing that was different for the rectangle was we started off with our perpendicular line over here. Then we had our rhombus. The rhombus was also the same as the parallelogram, except that we had to start off again a little bit differently because the rhombus is special in that the adjacent sides are equal to each other. So I had to make sure that this D was the distance, the same distance away from A as B is. So I used my compass to measure that distance and then to see how far it had to be from D over there. So I used my compass to draw that arc and then I was able to put D on that arc and draw my rhombus from there using the same process as we do for any other parallelogram. And then our square, which is has the most special attributes to it, is combining the, the fact that a rectangle has 90 degrees and a rhombus has equal sides, adjacent sides equal. So now if you look over here, the square, we started off the same as the rectangle, making a perpendicular line because it has to have 90 degrees. Then we did the same thing we did for the rhombus by getting the same distance from A to B using our compass and using that distance to work out where D had to be from A. And then we followed the same process of drawing a parallelogram. So all of these, the parallelogram, the rectangle, the rhombus, and the square, those are all actually parallelograms. They all have the property that a parallelogram has of two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. And that is what we were using to construct these quadrilaterals. The next two quadrilaterals we're going to be doing are not parallelograms. Okay, they do not have two pairs of opposite sides parallel to each other. The first one, that, or the next one that we're going to do is called a trapezium. Now, a trapezium is different. If we look quickly back at this over here, you can see that a trapezium is this one over here. It is a quadrilateral with one pair of opposite sides parallel. Okay, so you can see that this side is parallel to that side, but then these two sides are not parallel. Okay, sometimes you'll end up with them kind of like an isosceles triangle that they are going at the same angle, just opposite directions like that, and they'll end up being the same length as each other, but that's not the case for all trapeziums. Some trapeziums have that, but most trapeziums don't have that. Most trapeziums will have just two different directions for these two lines. Okay, so what we're going to do when we're constructing a trapezium is we're going to start off the same as we did for the parallelogram because we still need to have a pair of parallel lines. So that is what we're going to do first. We're going to construct our pair of parallel lines for our trapezium. Okay, so over here I've got the line that I'm starting from with A and B marked on it, and I'm going to be drawing a trapezium A, B, C, D. Okay, so first, just like I did for my parallelogram, I'm going to make a point above this line and I can put it anywhere that I want to I will put it over here and I'm going to label that point D and then join up AD and make sure it goes beyond so that I have some space for doing my arcs above D the next thing I'm going to do is take my compass and I'm going to draw an arc from A 
through both of those lines like that okay then I take it and I put it over here to do the exact same thing the same arc remember I'm trying to get a line that's going to be parallel to this so it has to go far enough down to cross over where I expect that line is going to be then I'm going to take my compass and measure the distance from here to here this point both of the points of intersection over here like that then I take that distance that radius and I draw an arc from this point through that arc over there to get a point of intersection that I can join up with D and that will give me my pair of parallel lines that I need for a trapezium okay so now I've got one pair of parallel lines now when we did the parallelogram we had to do another pair of parallel lines but I don't have to do that this time a trapezium only has one pair of opposite sides that are parallel so I don't have to worry about the other pair of opposite sides being parallel I can just draw any side now okay so I can draw one like this I can draw one like that I can draw one like this it really doesn't matter so long as I don't turn this into a triangle okay so I will draw one like this so long as it goes through point B because I need to have my trapezium A, B, C, D. So B has to be one of the points. Okay, so I'm going to go from point B like that. And then I'm going to label this over here C. Okay, so when you're doing a trapezium, you have to have one pair of opposite sides that are parallel. And then the other two sides can go any direction that you want. And then the last one that we're going to do is our kite now the kite is really quite different okay so that was the trapezium that we were just doing over there now we're going to do the kite okay now a kite doesn't have any sides that are parallel which means we're not going to be following the same process that we were doing for any of the others we're going to be doing it completely differently what we're going to start off by doing is we need to know that a kite has two pairs of opposite or two pairs of adjacent sides that are equal to each other. So just like we were doing for our rhombus and for our square, they had adjacent sides equal. We're going to start off the same as we did for those. We're going to start off by making sure that our distance or our compass is wide enough to be the same distance as AB. We need our radius to be the same as AB. Okay. Once I've done that, I can then take my compass, put it on A, and draw an arc from A like that. Okay. Now, my next thing that I need to do is I need to draw, I need to get another arc that this is going to intersect with. Now, I'm going, I could keep this the same if I wanted to. This distance that I, I have over here is going to be the width of my kite. So if you look over here at this kite over here, I'm now getting this distance between those two points. So whatever the width of your kite is going to be, that is what you're going to make your compass now. If you make it wider, then obviously you're going to have a, a, a wider kite. If you're going to make it narrower, you're obviously going to have a much narrower kite. Okay, so depending on how you want your kite to be, you can make the distance different, okay? In this case, I am going to make it a little bit wider, okay? And that's going to give me this over here. So now this is going to be my point of intersection. So this length that I've got over here, the radius I've got, is going to be the width or the, yeah, the width of my kite. So this is my point of intersection. This is going to be point D over here. So I can join that up now, or I can join it up later. It doesn't really matter. Like that. Okay, now, once I've done that, I'm going to change the width of my compass again, the radius of my compass again, and I'm going to make it a bit bigger again. So I'm going to go and put that now on B. Let's move that so you can see better. And I'm going to draw an arc from B somewhere in between where I expect it, it's going to, it needs to be in this area over here because it's going to intersect there somewhere. 
Okay, so I need to draw my arc like that. Then I'm going to take that same radius because remember the distance, the length of these two sides has to also be equal to each other because I have to have two pairs of adjacent side equal. These two are adjacent and they are equal, so the other two also need to be equal. So I need to keep the radius of my compass the same. Now I put my compass needle on D like that. So here is my point of intersection over there. And that is going to be our point C. So let me just go and join that up. Like that. And like that. And there we have got our kite with these two sides which are adjacent that means that they're next to each other they are equal and these two sides are also equal to each other okay and that is how you construct quadrilaterals remember quadrilaterals are shapes that have four sides and we have these six different quadrilaterals that we've constructed we've done parallelogram we've done rectangle rhombus and square which are actually all parallelograms as well just with extra defining qualities or properties then we've got the trapezium, which has one pair of opposite sides that are parallel. And then we have the, the kite, which is the one we just did over here, which is completely different. And it has no sides parallel. It has two pairs of adjacent sides that are equal in length. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.